So it's a new John Eves along with a new Fulton County. Something important happened at our first board meeting back in January. We first of all voted a vice chairman. Some may say it was symbolic, a symbolic role, but the vice chairman of our county government, board of commissioners, is Liz Hausman, who's doing a great job, has already spent four years of wonderful service representing Noah Fulton. We unanimously supported her. I thought it was a wonderful sign in terms of us wanting to show that we are bipartisan and wanted to represent and fight hard on behalf of all the citizens of Fulton County, including North and South Fulton. Then something else happened two weeks later that I think is also short of a miracle. In the past, the budgetary process, as it is often with government, is somewhat a contentious process. But at our second board meeting, the Board of Commissioners unanimously approved a $634 million general fund budget, the first time in 15 years that all the board members agreed on a budget. And that was also a second step towards collegiality, uniformity, and support, and an outward shine, a show of support or an outward sign of that we're working together. Then a couple of weeks later, as we went through the process of hiring a permanent county manager, vetted out candidates, and in February we met as a selection body and approved uh, Dick Anderson as the county manager. Again, unanimously behind him, the showing of uniformity and common ground. So you see this convergence of elected officials from diverse backgrounds uh, coming together, and we, my friends, want to make Fulton County exemplary uh, in the southeastern region. So I want to share with you a little bit of the good news about Fulton County. What we do, I tell people often that we impact a million residents from the cradle to the grave on a daily basis, whether it's through those in our county who are born in Grady Hospital, all the way through the end of life when you pass away and you may have to have an autopsy, an autopsy and a medical examiner will do the autopsy and give the report. All of that is Fulton County. So we impact people in large and small from the cradle to the grave. But my friends, we have a good story to tell. And often when I talk with people, I think one of the best stories that we have to tell is our support our unrelenting support for Grady Hospital. We have John Halpert here, along with his team. Uh, they have a tagline, uh, we can't live without Grady. We can't. We have supported Grady Hospital in the amount of 60 plus million dollars for the past couple years. This hospital does a great job in terms of uh, providing top uh, medical care to our residents, many of whom are people who can't and don't have insurance. And I even go over to Grady Hospital for my primary uh, uh, primary physician needs and get great service. Uh, sometimes I get VIP service, sometimes. <laughs> but it really is good service there. And so we're proud of what we do with Grady Hospital. We fought very hard as a county uh, six years ago to lead the transformation of the governance structure of the hospital and the creation of the corporation. And now it's doing well, it's operating in the black. And so when you see Grady Hospital and all the great things that it's doing in our communities, uh, it's because of the support of Fulton County. We are a major deliverer of services uh, to our residents. And one of the most popular things that we do uh, as a service provider is we provide support to host uh, libraries throughout our county. We're going through a major capital uh, renovation and construction project. There are seven libraries that are being built right now throughout our county. Uh, we learned the hard way in 20. 14, when we cut the budget uh, of the library by about $3 million, and it resulted in cutting back on our library hours. And we heard loud and clear from citizens throughout the county, north and south and Atlanta, about how popular the libraries are. And so we restored the, li uh, the library hours. We restored the budget back to the 2014 level, and 13 level. And so now our libraries are fully functional and uh, we're building libraries. And so we serve through our library system about three million people a year. And uh, we are committed to uh, making sure that our library system is robust, 
not only do we want to make sure that we have um, good, vibrant, up-to-date libraries, but we're also going to be going through a campaign of renovating libraries over the next couple of years. And so we do a lot in terms of delivery services in the area of libraries. Another area that we feel very, very good about, it's a minimum investment, but it has a great, uh, um, a great uh, return on the investment, and that's in the area of the arts. I was in Washington, D.C. a couple months ago and went to the National Endowment of the Arts, met with their upper level management, and they spoke very, very highly about what Fulton County is doing or has done in terms of our support in our vibrant arts community. We appropriate about $1.5 to $2 million a year towards uh, contract for services where we fund about uh, 60, 70 arts organizations in our county. And so we have put in our budget uh, about a $1.5 to $2 million to again continue that support uh, for the arts organizations throughout our county. Uh, we also put an additional $3 million to support arts centers. And so we're very, very proud of what we do in terms of the arts. We also do a lot in terms of senior services. We fund about 12 neighborhood senior, service, senior centers along with four uh, full service centers throughout our county. So we do a lot in terms of supporting our seniors. The big, biggest part of our budget, the biggest part of our budget is criminal justice. About 35% of our $630 million supports criminal justice. We do a lot with our court system. We do a lot with our jail. And so despite all the ch challenges we've had with the jail over many years, we finally got some good news, didn't we, Commissioner Garner, on Thursday? We had a consent decree order lifted. And Judge Thomas Thrash ruled in our favor. So for those of you who are not aware, back in 2004, our jail was in an atrocious situation. And one of the inmates filed a lawsuit supported by the Southern Center, 2004, about unsafe conditions in the jail. The county was imposed about 116 conditions and stipulations in which we had to meet in terms of changing the maintenance, cleanliness, jail locks, the whole nine yards. When I got in office in 2007, this was put on my lap. And over that time, from 2007 to the present, the commission worked with our justice partners very, very hard and made this one of our priorities. And finally, this consent decree order was lifted. So what does this mean? This means that we have a lot of flexibility in terms of funding of the jail, but also being very creative. And people don't realize this, but the jail receives about 40,000 people a year. 40,000 people a year go through the Fulton County Jail. About 90% of them are African-American male, and about 80% of them are high school dropouts. The cost of operating the jail is $103 million a year as direct cost. The state governor deal has done a great job in terms of criminal justice reform on the state level. I shared with him about a month ago that I want Fulton County to be a model in terms of how we deal with criminal justice, how we deal with um, prison incarceration or jail incarceration. And my friends, with this consent decree being lifted, it's going to help us get there. We have a big challenge in Fulton County in terms of recidivism. 70% of the folks in our jail, when they're released within three years, go back into our jail. That's too high. The state level is about 47, 50%. We want to get it down. And so the cost of having people in a jail is about $76 a day, about $26,000 a year. And so we want to minimize the number of people who are going into the jail by putting more money into what's called diversion, Accountability courts, drug courts, mental health court, DUI court, veterans court, as well as on the back end, when a person is released from jail, we don't just want to give them a MARTA fare to get home or to go back to their communities. We want to connect ex-offenders to providers in the community. And I know that criminal justice and jail incarceration is not a sexy subject, but it's an important subject. It's one of the things that counties are, are charged with doing, and we're going to do a much better job because it's a, a way for us not only to reduce costs, the cost of government, but a more importantly, it's an opportunity for us to um, help people to become productive citizens in our communities 
and in our county. And so we're going to put a lot of focus on criminal justice reform, just like the state has done a lot in terms of criminal justice reform on the state level. So what are we looking ahead? With Dick Anderson's strong managerial experience, last week, maybe two weeks ago, the board had our board meeting, a, a strategic planning session. We talked about what we want to do, what our priorities are over the next couple of years. Number one, we're going to be a model of efficiency in government. We recently got a KPMG um, audit or an assessment done in which we, this study showed that we can save about $15 million through some operational um, um, consolidations, dealing with policies, changing some of our internal processes. And you may say, well, 10 to $15 million really is not a lot of money compared to $630 million budget, but actually it is. And with Dick Anderson's leadership and the board support, we're going to project out that we can save taxpayers, um, tax um, citizens, about a hundred plus million dollars over the next 10 years. And this will give us a great opportunity to reinvest some of these dollars either to being a more impactful government or passing these tax dollars back to our, our citizens. And I'm quite sure uh, Representative Baskin and Representative Martin would be happy about that. So we see this as a great opportunity to be more efficient in government. Number two, we want to be a government that's known for exemplary customer service. I'm going to put in a little commercial. I bank with Wells Fargo. <laughs> and when I go to Wells Fargo as John E. is a private citizen, I get good customer service. When I interact with Gas South, I get, get good customer service. Our customers, our constituents expect good customer service. Why should government be an exception? Why should government be this, folk, this place where you just know ahead of time that you're going to endure a headache. So the Board of Commissioners, we're going to make customer service one of our top priorities. Training our, our employees to be customer service friendly. But not only training, but also utilizing technology. Utilizing technology. Just as if I want to go to a restaurant in North Fulton that I don't know how to get to, and I use my app, or just as I can make reservations for a restaurant, why can't our constituents utilize technology to interface in a more efficient, a more friendly way through the use of technology? So we're going to look at how technology can be utilized and incorporated to make the uh, customer, the constituent interface with government a whole lot more pleasant and effective than it is right now. You're also, number three, going to see a new era in terms of collaboration. I'm a big proponent that through collaboration, you can get a whole lot more done than if you work as two individual parts. If one person does one thing and another person does one thing, you add it up, it'll be a certain amount. But when they do it together, it will be more. And so you're going to see a, an era of ERA, era of collaboration. We've already met twice with the mayors of Fulton County. We've extended the invitation from Alpharetta down to Palmetto. We've met twice talking about how we can have a strong agenda that includes economic development, transportation, and a better delivery of services. And my friends, by reaching out and reading with the, meeting with the mayors and a desire to meet with them on a quarterly basis, it has generated heightened collegiality and a desire to make our county the best that it can possibly be. So we're going to be collaborating uh, with all the cities uh, in Fulton County, including uh, the city of Atlanta. We also are going to be collaborating with the school systems. Uh, we met with the Fulton County school system um, about a month ago, and we talked about how we can work with them as partners to address uh, the high school achievement gap as well as the high school completion gap need. As I mentioned in uh, the criminal justice stats, 80% of the folks in our jail are high school dropouts. So the more people that you get to stay in school, to graduate, to get skills, get a diploma, the fewest people will end up in our criminal justice system. And as I conclude my remarks and certainly open the floor 
uh, Walter for any questions that anyone has. Um, again, we're going to be collaborating more. We certainly see other ways that we can um, have a mark uh, in our communities, whether it's homelessness. Um, right now, the county does its thing. The city of Atlanta does its thing. Uh, this is a great opportunity for the county and the city to come back together to address an issue. When you drive down Peachtree and go by Peachtree Pine, you see uh, great evidence of how we're not doing a good job in terms of, of dealing with our homeless population. And again, going forward, one of the things I'm very excited about, thanks in part to the great work of the legislature in terms of the transportation bill, I'm excited about the county uh, leading the effort in terms of uh, promoting um, uh, projects in our county uh, so that we can uh, have these uh, projects funded to take off the table uh, the complaint that many of our residents have in North Fulton and South Fulton and all parts in between about some of the trans transportation and transit woes and traffic woes that we have in our county. So my friends, as I pointed out earlier, this is a new day in Fulton County. I'm very excited about our board. I'm excited about our management. I'm excited about what we're going to be doing uh, as, a, as a body and as a government to serve the needs of, of Fulton County. And lastly, I am also excited about my role as chairman, finally enjoying what I'm doing. <laughs> I certainly want to open up the floor for any questions that anyone may have. Well, I'll throw one out. Um, talk about your last topic on transportation. Does that mean that um, Fulton will look to take advantage of the, um, the renewed uh, t boss son of t boss I guess, when you're looking to do something there? And So as I, as I understand it, I mean, we, we may potentially have the ability to do this solo with, as one single county. And I'm still getting briefings on that from the Association of the County Commissioners of Georgia. And I'm going to be reaching out to the legislature, the Fulton County delegation as well, and the cities. But um, I went through the, um, the transportation um, effort from three years ago, I believe, it was a part of the round table. And we generated a list of projects, not only in the region, but specifically in Fulton County. And I think that some of those projects are still on the table. But I think that we will be working as a commission with the mayors of the cities in terms of identifying projects. So I am certainly see the value and the benefit. And um, when we had the, the, the TSPLAS, I, I think three years ago, even though it failed in the region, I believe in Fulton County, we had about 47% of the folks who voted for it. Even though it, it wasn't the majority, but 47% voted for it. And I believe that that margin can increase, particularly for transparent about the projects that are available uh, for funding. So I am supportive of it. Thank you. Yes. So the Smart Justice Council is a council of um, law enforcement um, agencies, as well as um, criminal justice partners, educational um, experts, and commissioners. And it's a council that was unanimously voted on and supported back in December of last year. And we feel that by looking at criminal justice in a smart and an innovative way, is more effective and more efficient than the traditional punitive approach to criminal justice. So there's unanimous support of it. And again, as I mentioned about the consent decree being lifted, it gives the board now some flexibility in its current funding mechanism that we fund the jail. On a national level, there's something called criminal reinvestment, which means that the dollars that you typically would fund incarceration you can put those dollars into the diversion area uh, to, to work with people, as well as the post-release areas. And uh, I'm a strong proponent of that. So I want to begin to fund um, more accountability courts, drug courts, mental health courts, veterans courts. Those courts, they are a whole lot more effective in terms of criminal justice reform and help and work than incarceration. The recidivism rate 
for people to go through the DUI courts, the mental health courts, et cetera, is incredibly low. It's like 10 percent. And so we want to put more dollars into that. Yes. <clears throat> It's not what it used to be, but it's, it's been static over the past several years. Uh, Commissioner Garner has been a strong proponent of the, the arts funding. And, you know, it, whenever we, we make any adjustment to the arts budget, we certainly see through citizens coming to our board meetings how important the arts are in the entire county. And so even though the $1.5 to $2 million that we invest in terms of uh, services to the arts organizations is somewhat modest, it still helps. And so there is a commitment, Democrat and Republican, bipartisan commitment to support the arts. But right now it's just at a pretty static level, about $1.5 to $2 million a year. Yes, John. Um, and this may not be a fair question, but I want to ask you. Um, have you. Have you guys looked at your, the, the approach you're taking to criminal justice? It's a great point. Uh, we haven't done that type of analysis, but I think that if we were to do that type of analysis and show it to the public, but also demonstrate that this way of dealing with justice leads to enhanced uh, public safety, I think we can get good support for it. So we have not done the analysis in terms of how more funding and accountability could actually lead to better results. We have some preliminary information, but we have not done a full analysis. But the larger issue is we got to very effectively and persuasively convince the public that this type of justice is a lot more effective. I think all of us um, grew up and have been exposed and think that the punitive way, putting folks in jail, is an is a effective way. And it actually is not. Yes, for the violent uh, offenders who are a threat to society, but most people who go into our criminal justice system are nonviolent, and it's actually more effective to deal with them by sentencing them to um, uh, substance abuse provider, a mental health provider, et cetera. That's a lot more effective than just having them sit in jail and not do anything. Yes. So we have an economic development uh, department. Um, it's funded at a modest level, about $750,000 a year. It's a three-person operation. We also have a person, uh, I think one or two consultants who are doing economic development in South Fulton, the unincorporated area. Uh, we've shared with the county manager um, um, in general our desire for some sort of consolidation or the marrying of the two in a more robust effort. But more importantly, there is sort of, there's some duplication of, of economic development efforts through, from cities, uh, particularly in North Fulton. And we've had some early conversations about how can we better collaborate. So um, there's a lot more room for improvement. We do have some degree of an infrastructure in place that needs to be modified. But we also have something called the Development Authority. So the Atlanta has Invest Atlanta, which used to be the Atlanta Development Authority. Well, the Fulton County Development Authority does a lot in terms of economic development. We've been very blessed and excited about Mercedes Benz coming to Sandy Springs. Well, the little known fact, little known, little known history fact, is that Fulton County Development Authority was a part of the, the portfolio of attracting um, Mercedes Benz. Fulton County Development Authority also played a role with Porsche going to Hateville. And so we have the makes of a good, robust economic development effort that could rival the city of Atlanta, uh, but it's just a matter of connecting some of the dots. So we do have some things in place, but we're going to uh, improve on that over the next year. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity, and uh, we certainly need more and more stakeholders and supporters and champions of Fulton County government. 
Um, but I want to assure you that it's a new day in Fulton County, and we will soon make our county government the top government in the southeastern part of the United States. Have a great day. Well, thank you, Chairman Eves, and uh, thank you all for coming, and have a productive day.